QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Fixed asset items record depreciation expense. Let's get into it with Intuit. QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our fixed asset practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting the open windows list. We now want to think about the recording of the depreciation expense. To do so, let's be opening up our financial statements. Reports drop down up top, going down to the company and financial, opening up the balance sheet standard. I'm going to change the dates in the customized section up to the upper right. This is going to be from 010121 to 123121 say okay so we have our fixed asset information down below here then we're going to open up our p and l profit and loss by going to the reports drop down company and financial we'll take a look at the profit and loss standard changing the dates from 010121 to 123121 so we're going to record our standard kind of depreciation expense transaction which is going to be a, an adjusting journal entry typically done periodically either monthly or yearly we're going to do it kind of like on a yearly uh, method here and we're going to just debit depreciation expense, credit the accumulated depreciation, or increase the depreciation expense and increase the accumulated depreciation. A couple of things we want to just keep in mind, however, as we do so. If I go back up to the balance sheet, note that we've been tracking our uh, costs in our fixed asset lists as we buy them. So if I go to the lists drop down and we go to the fixed asset item list, we've been tracking our fixed asset items that we have here that should tie out to the cost on our balance sheet or at least if it doesn't have to the cost we want to track it for the current time period so that we can provide the current purchases and disposals to the tax preparer so that they can calculate the proper depreciation on both a book or tax method if we're using two methods but they got to do it at least on the tax method so in other words this information here that we're tracking not necessarily where we're going to and usually is not where we will for most companies calculate the depreciation expense meaning we're not going to actually do double declining method or you know tax method makers method straight line method calculations within the quickbooks system it's not really you know designed to do that and the reason it, that it works well to do it outside is because the tax software for taxes it has a different depreciation calculation than generally accepted accounting principles which some small companies may just put their books on a tax method so that they do not need two separate accounting methods but in any case the tax software is going to need to do the calculation so if you do the calculation and the tax software does the calculations it's likely there's going to be a difference there's going to be problems because it gets complex so it'd be easier just to do all the calculations in one system so what we want to do then is get this schedule together so that the tax software can put the information into their system as easily as possible lining up each individual item in the proper category then they can calculate the depreciation on that using the software which would look something like this here's our depreciation schedules and our calculation of the depreciation then we can take that information put it back in our books now if you're a small company you might just want hey you might just tell the tax preparer just do the tax depreciation and we'll record our books on tax basis method basically uh, and that could be easier because the tax depreciation that means we don't need to run two different depreciation schedules however you might want two different depreciation schedules because the book depreciation uh, is designed for a different purpose than tax depreciation and once you plug this information into the tax software the tax software should typically be able to do two separate calculations if you feed the proper information into it to do so. So here we're using a straight line method, for example, same information over here, but same cost and whatnot, but using maker's method, double decline in half year convention and applying out, you know, special depreciation and 179 depreciation and whatnot for taxes. So if I go back to the book depreciation, let's assume that we want the book depreciation and then we want to record it on our side. So once we give this information to the tax pro professional to do the taxes, then, I, then they might then provide us with the, the information for us to record the adjusting entries either monthly or uh, yearly. Let's say yearly at this point in time. So let's pretend, you know, it's the end of the year of, of now this is 2020. We're going to pretend it's the end of 2021 right and we would record the, the depreciation for the entire year based on this information so if they gave us then the schedule we can then record the depreciation expense now we could do this with the total so if i go down to the bottom of this thing then we've got the total depreciation which is going to be this amount to the right or we can do it category by category 
and break out the depreciation so that we have the accumulated depreciation broken out by category, those being the auto, the furniture, the machinery, and equipment. So we can have the book value for each of those. That's how we set it up. That's how we'll deal with it. However, you got to be careful with the sales when you do that. The sales line item was sold. So this 128, we already recorded it and then removed it when we sold it. You can see that down on the bottom of the report here, where that has the, the total depreciation for the, for the year, and then the amount that was sold. And this is the depreciation after the sale took place. So sales disposals, they kind of mess up the process and you got to be careful uh, about them. So at the end of the day, we already recorded the 128 on our books on depreciation. We need to record the rest, which is the 13,731. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the depreciation on the year should be this 13,858. But we already recorded the 128 of it. So we're going to record another 13,731. Now we could do that with one transaction recording a credit to accumulated depreciation, a debit to depreciation expense for this amount that was remaining. And that would be it. Uh, if we went, went back here, that would be if we had only set up one accumulated depreciation account for all fixed asset type of accounts. In other words, we're not breaking out the book value per section, but we just have one account. We broke it out so we have this book amount for each section. So it's a bit more complex, but provides more information as well. So we're going to do this section by section. And I'm going to go back up top and say that we want to, we want to pick up for the auto, a debit to a depreciation expense for the automobile specifically, 12167 and then a credit to accumulated depreciation. This is typically done with a journal entry. So we'll do that over on our books. Also note that if I go to my books here, you could set up items for the fixed asset amounts like we did that here for the accumulated depreciation. I had to set up this one going to accumulated depreciation in order to set up the sale item. But I don't think it's so you could, you know, set that up all the accumulated depreciation amounts, but I don't think it's really worth doing that in, in uh, the QuickBooks system. I think it's best or easiest to track your data over here uh, by just recording the changes the purchases and the disposals in the year so that you can provide that information to the tax preparer and then rely on the tax software to actually calculate the depreciation expense. Okay, so let's go record this typically done with journal entries. So we're going to go to the uh, to the company drop down, I'm going to go to make journal entry. And if it was at the end of the year, we would just record this as of the cutoff date, which is 1231 uh, 21. And we would debit depreciation now i want to make another subcategory for depreciation related to each category this one's for auto so i'm going to say i want a new account a new account it's going to be an expense account and i'm going to say new and it's going to be a subcategory of the depreciation subcategory there it's going to be depre i'll just abbreviate it for auto mobiles automobiles as always, if I spell things wrong, you know, I apologize for that. I do it actually on purpose just so you can catch those little things and, and you know, because it's fun to catch the misspelling problems. So it's actually a, a game. I, anyway, so I'm going to say that this is going to be going to the 12167. 12167. So we'll say 12167. And then I would put something like an adjusting entry for the memo and then we want accumulated depreciation specifically for the auto that's going to be a fixed asset account on the credit side once again this is an adjusting entry and i'll say save and close and then yes and then we'll check it out this transaction is not in balance that's not good so the credit should be one two one six seven on the credit side and now let's try to save and close it and then if I go back to the balance sheet now and update it, we're going to say, okay, so now the auto, if we take a look at the auto has the 80,000 in it minus the accumulated depreciation of the 12,167, which should tie out then to our schedule over here. So here's our schedule. If we pull out the trusty calculator, we have the cost on this side, the 80,000, nothing in the prior year depreciation minus the current year depreciation of 12167. That's the 67,833, uh, which is going to match out here for the uh, 67,833. Okay, let's do the same thing for the furniture and fixture, but that's that tricky one because this 180, this 128, we already did. So, like, I don't want to record that again because I already recorded that when we sold it because we sold it. 
So I'm going to say this is going to be the 134 plus the 90, which is the 224. That's going to be the transaction. Let's do it. Back to QuickBooks. I'm going to say let's do another transaction company drop down. Make a journal entry. We're going to be debiting then the depreciation, depre expense for the furniture and fixture for the 224. This is an ADJ entry. And the other side is going to go to accumulated depreciation for the furniture and fixture. Also an ADJ entry. And then let's save and close that. And that's okay, I think. Fixed asset items listing to report track the fixed asset. So it's telling us we could set up, you know, the fixed asset item. I'm not going to do it for the accumulated depreciation. I don't think it adds a whole lot of that. Okay, so we're going to go back to the balance sheet then. If I go back to the balance sheet, we have uh, this information. So there's the 1879. That should tie out to, to the uh, 1879 here after we made the sale, which is going to be this uh, 3226 minus the one we sold, 1347, 1879. And then we have the book value at the one, uh, 1655 which should match out to the book value if we were to uh, subtract out. So it would be that, that 1877 minus the 134 minus the 90, 1655. That should tie out over here to the 1655. Now let's do the machinery. Last one. Scrolling down to the machinery. We've got the total here for the 1340. So let's do that. So company drop down, we're going to go down to the make a journal entry. And then we're going to say I'm going to debit the ACC Depre. I'm going to make a new one this time, new account. And this is going to be an expense account. It's going to be a subcategory of the depreciation again, but I want to make a specific one for the ACC Depre, Depre for machinery and equipment equip let's keep it the equip and then we'll say save and there we have it and i'm going to debit that one for the one three four zero so one three four zero memo adjusting entry credit the accumulated depreciation machinery and equipment fixed asset account also an adj entry in tree my fingers are on the wrong thing. okay so then i'm going to save and close that one yes save it and then i'll close this out and then if i go back to the uh to the balance sheet we have i'm going to refresh it now so i have the the machinery and equipment on the books for the cost of the six seven the depreciation for the difference of the five three six zero if i go back on over here we've got uh, the cost six seven so 6700 minus the 1340 is the 5360. Five, so that looks good. So if I go then back on over, so that's going to be the entire thing. Now, my total then of the fixed assets, if I was to like collapse the entire thing and say, let's just take a look at a total, is the 74848. If I go back on over to my information here and I take a look at the total on the bottom after the sale took place, I'm going to say, all right, well, then my total should be then this 88579 minus the depreciation i only have the current year not the prior year because i only have this one year of the 13 731 and that should be the 74848 so 74 so 74848 and that's note after the sale took place so the sale's been removed here sales been removed and then on the other side on the on the income statement side of things if i go down to the profit and loss We've got the profit and loss broken out nicely by a category of, of the type of depreciation expense. And notice this one, I labeled it incorrectly as accumulated depreciation. So I, that's not right. I'm going to go back to the lists drop down, chart of accounts, and depreciation expense. This one, I'm going to double click on it. Uh, not double click on it. I'm going to right click on it and edit it. Edit the account. And I want this to be Depre Expense. Expense. We'll keep it there. Equip. EQ. Depre Expense. 
something like that. And then we'll say save and close. So, so there we have it. So now we've got, or let's, they don't, I didn't put expense on the other one. So I'll edit that one and I'll just call it Depre. Let's just call it D Depre machinery and equip. And so how about that? Save and close. So, and I need an E one more time. Edit. Let's put an E on it. Depre. All right. So that looks kind of nice. That looks nice. Okay. So then if I go back to the balance, to the profit and loss. So now we have uh, those three items line up. And if I was to minimize them, we got the 13,859. And that should tie out to, to this item, which is the 13,859. Now notice it doesn't tie out to the bottom line because this 128 is the current amount that we sold. We still recognize this 128 in the current time period as an expense. So we should have, we still recorded the full amount. It's just that the, the asset related to this expense had then been sold. So we still recorded it. We still recognize the expense and then it was sold. So we had to recognize it in the sales item. So this is correct. The 13,859 is the amount that we would want then on on this side on the profit and loss side of things now note that the fixed assets were not trapped i didn't go in and set up another fixed asset account for all the accumulated depreciation fixed asset accounts we could have that might be might be worthwhile to do i don't think it really is i think it's better i think it's more worthwhile to track the cost uh, with this report so that you can then provide that to the tax preparer and then use the the software to calculate the accumulated depreciation otherwise you would have to basically go back into your accumulated depreciation account such as this one and basically uh, adjust adjust the amount every time every time you have every year and if you had a lot of fixed assets i don't think i'm not sure that would be worth your time to do